In this video, I'm going to tell you about a type of noise called pink noise. It's also sometimes called 1 over f noise or fractal noise. Pink noise is characterized by a power spectrum that decreases with increasing frequency. This is quite different from the flat power spectrum of the normal and uniform noises that I showed in the previous video. That's also the reason why this type of noise is sometimes called 1 over f. The power spectrum roughly follows the relationship of 1 over f, where f is frequency. So as the frequency f increases, this fraction decreases. In fact, it's really 1 over f to the c, where c is some positive number, typically between 0 and 2 or maybe 3. I'm going to show you two different ways to make random pink noise in MATLAB. In some sense, the two methods are similar but they offer distinct insights into the nature of 1 over f noise, as well as providing different ways of controlling the properties of simulated time series. So here is the first method. The goal is to create complex numbers, which I will use as Fourier coefficients. So here I generate normally distributed random numbers that are modulated by a negative exponential. Those numbers will become the amplitudes of the Fourier coefficients. This line mirrors the coefficients to create a backwards version of the coefficients to cover both the Nyquist and the negative frequencies. Here I use Euler's notation, so a e to the i k, where k are random phases, and then I compute the inverse FFT in order to get back into the time domain. If you're not familiar with the mechanisms of the Fourier transform, then basically the idea here is to create the power spectrum that I want first, and then transform that power spectrum into the time domain in order to get a time domain series. If you are interested in learning more about the mechanisms of the Fourier transform and why this sort of thing works, then you can consider taking my course on the Fourier transform. So here you see the time series. It's quite different from the random time series that I created in the previous video. It has some temporal structure and somehow looks a bit more realistic, I think. Here you see the amplitude spectrum and not surprisingly, it decreases with increasing frequency. The rate of decay of this function is governed by a parameter of the exponential which here I call ED for exponential decay. You can try setting this to smaller values, like 5, for example, and you'll see that the power spectrum decays much more quickly, which has a pretty striking effect on the time series and the signal distribution. And if I make this ED parameter larger, then the 1 over F spectrum decays more slowly, creating more high frequency activity in the time domain signal. It's interesting to see that the overall distribution is similar here as for the normally distributed random numbers, although the power spectrum looks totally different. That shows that the distribution on its own isn't really a strong diagnostic feature of a time series. And that's because this distribution ignores the temporal ordering of the data points. And for a time series, the order matters. Now for the second method of creating pink noise. This method works entirely in the time domain. We don't have to worry about Fourier transforms or inverse Fourier transforms. Here I define frequencies to go from 1 to 150 hertz in 300 steps. Then I loop through all of those frequencies, compute the amplitude per frequency to be 1 over f to the c, where in this case I define c to be 1. Then I create a sine wave using that amplitude and that frequency and a random phase value. In the course of this loop, all of these individual sine waves will be summed together. This is an interesting way of creating a time series because you have a lot of control over many features of the time series signal. For example, by setting the lower and upper frequency bounds, you can control the spectral content of the signal. For example, we can define only to generate frequencies between 1 and 50 hertz instead of 1 and 150 hertz. By specifying the number of frequencies, I can also control the complexity of the signal. 
So now let's go from 1 to 150 hertz in only 30 steps. Finally, by adjusting this C variable here, you can control the shape of the power distribution. Values larger than 1, like 2 for example, will give more weight to lower frequencies, and values smaller than 1, for example 0.4, will give more weight to higher frequencies. In this video, I showed you two methods to create pink noise, which is also sometimes called 1 over f noise. It's also often called fractal noise. And the reason why it's called fractal is that signals with a fractal or scale-free structure exhibit power spectra consistent with 1 over f. Many signals in physics and biology have this kind of 1 over f distribution. So if you work with any kind of real data, whether it's satellite images or earthquake magnitudes or heartbeats or brain activity, you will often see these kinds of distributions.